Well, good morning, everybody. It's Dr. Carmen Bryan. This is Car Chronicles. How are you guys doing? You guys ready? Come on, let's do this. Have you guys heard of the term genetic predisposition? You guys ask the question. Some of you guys know what it means, and some of you guys are like, okay, no, no, you go ahead and explain it to me and see where you're going with this. You guys, you want to hear that? So genetic predisposition is the increased likelihood of a person um, developing a particular disease based off of their genetic makeup. Family history is the strongest risk factor for common diseases such as cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disorders, autoimmune disorders, psychiatric illnesses. So having said all that, one of the things that I talked about in the conference, um, I think it was at Apostle Helen Sadler's conference. I may have mentioned it in my own conference, but we were talking about intergenerational trauma. And intergenerational trauma is when the trauma from a family member, from a trauma, is passed down from generation to generation to generation. And some of you have already been predisposed to some things that have happened that you don't even know anything about. That has been uh, passed down from family member to family member to family member. Another thing that I talked about, which you guys may not or may be aware of, is even though the narcissist mirrors you, children mirror their adults, their, their parents. And children mirror their parents up to a point where they even mirror the way that you cope with stress. So the way that you respond to stress or, stress or trauma or stress in general, children mimic or they mirror you. They mock how you uh, respond and what type of coping skills you have. And for some of you that have been through trauma in your childhood, have been through trauma even in adulthood, and you have children, the children watch you and then they respond to the way they respond to, to anxiety or depression or they, they lack coping skills because they're watching you and seeing how you respond to it. I have talked to people where the kids are walking around with lavender fragrances and, and, and what is it, lavender flowers and they're always anxious, they're anxious, they're anxious. And when you talk to them, they can't even tell you why they're anxious. I was born this way, I'm just anxious. But then you meet the parent and the parent is even more anxious than the child is. But the child responds to everything the same way that the parent does. For example, those parents that have been through post-traumatic stress or complex post-traumatic stress, the way that you respond to the um, to the stress or the way that you respond, your children pick up on that and they act the exact same way. Now what happens is <clears throat> a lot of those children go through vicarious trauma. So they're experiencing the trauma through you. And a lot of them, when they go and get diagnosed or, you know, uh, medical professionals or mental health professionals, you know, they can be diagnosed with PTSD because of the fact that they're experiencing PTSD through you. They're responding the same way that you're responding. They're mimicking you. They're, they're, they're mirroring you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, if you have been in a narcissistic relationship or you have been with a narcissist, which many of you guys have, you have to pay attention to how you responded or it's not even responding, you're reacting acting because responding means you have to think you want to respond and not react but the way that you react to everyday stressors you're just stressed all the time you worry all the time you know you can never be at peace you you're constantly depressed you know uh, your children begin to act the same way that you act and you put it upon them it's almost like you project yourself on them as well and don't realize that you're doing is like she's just a very depressed child she's a very quiet child she's a very isolated child you're isolated if you are uh, have you ever watched those families that are just go, go into sports, doing this, doing that? The kids become very active. Then you see those those uh, families that are loud. I, I'm a loud family. I mean, I know you can't really tell because I'm so quiet. And those of you that have met me in person because I'm so quiet and shy. But my children are loud. We are a loud household. Laugh, joke, ha ha. We're just loud. I'm around loud people. We're just loud. My daughter thinks that she's quiet and she's not. She's loud. My All my kids, my grandkids, loud. You know, I get around my own family, loud. We just, those type of people. And then you meet those other people that are quiet and reserved. They don't, they don't believe in being loud and laughing loud. And why are you guys talking at each other and not talking to each other? You know, there are some, some families that grew up in a quiet atmosphere. Well, your children tend to mimic or, or mirror exactly the atmosphere, the environment that they come from. And some of you have... 
And some of you that are recovering from narcissist abuse, some of you that are coming out of these situations, you got to be careful because healing is important. He, you have to heal on behalf of your children. You know, you have to heal because your children are carrying, you know, that, that, that intergenerational, I had to look down at it, the ink that I've written down, the intergenerational trauma. And that intergenerational trauma, uh, and I'll give you an example. And those of you that, that did not come to the conference, I talked about this. I'll give you a little bit. I'll give you tidbits and little tidbits. Um, if you guys go and study back during the Nazi era, um, when they, um, we obviously you know the Netherlands, um, they attacked the Netherlands as well. Um, but Hitler had caused a famine. And he had stopped all the food. And so it was over 22,000 people that had died of starvation. Um, there were pregnant women at that particular time. And this is epigenase. Go look it up. Um, and uh, there were pregnant women at that particular time um, that also were starving but were pregnant. Um, and when they did studies, they found that their children, when their children, they followed their children into, um, I think, into m midlife. Um, but they monitored them. And, and genetically, they had been altered. Um, and they begin to display things like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, I think diabetes. They were having different health issues because they were exposed to the trauma that their mothers were exposed to in vitro. Um, also, during the 9-11, there were people, uh, women that, that were pregnant at that particular time. Uh, you can go look this up too. And you know cortisol. Cortisol is that stress hormone that's released. Um, and it's almost like that valve stays stuck open, you know, when you're on that fight flight of freeze or fawn mode, you know, but that adrenaline is pumping and that, that cortisol is pumping. That's why you see men and women that got those big bellies, you know, those are stress bellies, you know, and what happened was is um, they studied the children of uh, the babies and the children of those that gave birth, um, you know, after the 9-11, they were involved in the 9-11 and they found that some of them had a low production of, of, um, of uh, the cortisol. Now, you need cortisol, but you don't want the overproduction of cortisol. And so if there's an underproduction of cortisol, think about, you know, how the body is handling stress. You know, if there's an overproduction of cortisol, you know, how's the body handling stress? And so these, these children are having issues, diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, because their body doesn't know how to regulate. You know, they came in vitro. They were already, some of you guys have been, you know, uh, uh, traumatized in vitro. And some of you were the parents that carried the children that were traumatized. Some of you are the, ch you have been predisposed. That's just like drug and alcohol. You know, what do you think we do in a mental health? We do things like called genograms. That's a Bowenian theory, genograms. Um, and genograms are family trees. And what we, you know, even when we do intakes, a lot of people, when we do intakes, mental health professionals do intakes, uh, especially if you have like mood disorders. The first questions that we ask is, does anybody in your family have schizophrenia or bipolar or mood disorders? Do they have depression? Do they have suicidal ideations or completed suicides? Is there anybody in your family that has drug or alcohol addictions, you know, substance abuse addictions? You know, because that has given us a blueprint of you, what to expect with you. You know, people that have come from families that have PTSD, you know, that have witnessed trauma in their countries, you know, uh, uh, a lot of immigrants that came, you know, their parents act a certain way because they were immigrants fleeing from different countries. And so they have taught their children to respond a certain way to stress, even to their environment. And you don't know why you act the way that you act or you don't know why you're doing what you're doing it's because you've already been predisposed to it and don't even know. And this goes back from generation to generation, to generation. You wonder why your child is acting a certain way but you can't find anybody else in your family that is that that way now you talk to a great grandmother great grand uncle or I mean a great great uh, uncle or aunt or something like that and they'll tell you that the great grandmother was exactly like that but you don't know because a lot of that history is gone and so you are you know you you do carry you a lot of you are predisposed to trauma predisposed to you know uh, how you respond you know connection issues uh, um, um, you know people have attachment issues you know because this has been passed on you know you have a, a anxious connection or anxious attachment to people and you wonder why some people have borderline personality disorder you know and that is a serious problem with attachment as well that 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 love hate relationship with people you wonder why people have developed um, develop narcissistic personality disorder, you know, and, and keep in mind that 
we still have researchers and, and, and professionals that are still studying uh, narcissistic personality disorder because there's a lot that plays a role in it. Environment, uh, predisposition, you know, uh, family, you know, it, it, a lot of things. There are a lot of things that plays. There's no definitive answer as how NPD has developed. But a lot of you, you know, you have to seek help. You have to get uh, therapy. You need to talk to somebody. You need to take care of yourself physiologically so that you don't pass this on to your children. Somewhere we got to break the curse. Somewhere we have to break the cycle. And it starts with you. Started with me. It starts with you. What you going to do?